Hi, I'm Rod Miller, and you're watching Astrobrief. This is brief number two for Friday, November 19th, 2021. A lunar eclipse, twin shadows on Jupiter, and more Raspberry Pi goodness. Adjust your focus and hit capture. Astrobrief starts now. Okay, let's start with a quick night sky update for this week. Sunday, November 21st, the bright moon will be near M35. When the Wan and Gibbous moon rises among the stars of the eastern Taurus after 6 p.m. local time on Sunday, the 21st, it'll be positioned just a few finger widths above or 3 degrees to the celestial west of the large open cluster M35. The moon and the cluster will share the view in binoculars with the moon's motion having their separation by dawn. To better see the cluster, which is nearly as wide as the moon itself, try hiding the moon just outside the top edge of your binoculars field of view. Tuesday, November 23rd, twin shadows and the GRS, Great Red Spot, transit Jupiter. On Tuesday evening, November 23rd, observers in the Americas with telescopes can view a rare treat when the round black shadows of two of Jupiter's moons will transit Jupiter accompanied by the great red spot. The show will begin when the spot and Ganymede's shadow appear about 6.15 Eastern Time, a few minutes before 7 on Wednesday. Callisto's shadow will join them. The trio will cross for about two and a half hours until the great red spot rotates out of view. Friday, November 26, the Andromeda Galaxy. In late November, the Andromeda Galaxy is positioned really high in the southern sky during the evenings. The large spiral galaxy, also known as M31, is about 2.5 million light years from us and covers about 3 by 1 degrees in the sky. The three westernmost stars of Cassiopeia, Caf, Shadar, and Navi, conveniently create an arrow that points towards M31. Use your lowest magnification eyepiece to look for M31's companion galaxies in the foreground M32 and in the background M110. A classic astronomy book review. Another one of my favorite astronomy books, Turn Left at Orion. This is another classic astronomy book that should be in every beginner's library. Why? Well. It's, it's like a road map or a Rand McNally atlas for the sky. What I love about the book is it breaks everything down by seasons and then it gives you everything you need for a specific observation. You start with the sky conditions that are best for an object and then it gives you a wide field chart and tells you where to look. It shows you what you should see in the finder scope and what you should see in the eyepiece. I like that the illustrations are all black and white. They're sort of like pencil drawings and they don't exaggerate the visibility of an object. The comments and explanation of what you're seeing are also great. And if you're just getting started in backyard astronomy, I have a couple of backyard astronomy courses up on Udemy. Check out the links in the show notes below. Okay, this week we continue with our quest for a sub $1,000 smart scope. Returning to our little Raspberry Pi single board computer, you remember last week I told you I bought the wrong Raspberry Pi kit. That's only partially true. The kit that I bought is the Canna kit off of Amazon, and it did include everything required to get started. Then I started looking online at the ASI Air Pro and Plus, and I noticed that the ASI Air Plus adds an external antenna for much better Wi-Fi reach. A little background here. The ZWO are essentially just a Raspberry Pi in a cool red metal case with some nice mounting hardware and an accessory board that'll control four external power ports. The biggest complaint about the ASI Air Pro was the short Wi-Fi range. Looking online, I found a, a couple of sellers who will modify your ASI Air Pro and add an external antenna. You can also do this yourself if you're skilled at electronics and soldering, but I'm too lazy to do that. So 
I ordered a second Raspberry Pi off of eBay, already modified with an external antenna, because I want our smart scope to be able to sit outside while we sit comfortably indoors in a bug-free, snow-free environment. Well, this is the one we'll use for the final version of our project. Also remember last week I said it's all about the software. For our DIY project, there are two main choices, Astroberry and Stellarbank. Astroberry is a free, open-source, community-supported so project that will essentially do just about everything StellarMate will do, except StellarMate includes their own remote app available for both Android and iOS. I want to be able to control our smart scope from an iPad, so I chose StellarMate for this project. StellarMate OS is $50, and again, it includes a well-designed app that runs on Android or iOS. Here we can see the instructions for getting started. Once purchased, we simply download the file and a program called Etcher. We put a high-speed Class 10 SD card in our reader and plug it in. Open Etcher, select the file and the SD card, and hit Flash. Then we pop our card into the Raspberry Pi and Bob's your uncle. We have a smart scope controller for about $150. Now let's look at what we actually have. I've already downloaded the StellarMate app to my iPad and we can connect to our Raspberry Pi several different ways. We could even plug a monitor and keyboard and mouse into the unit. For now, we're going to use the web browser. The first thing we want to do is connect our PC to the Raspberry Pi's built-in hotspot, then attach it to our home network so we can update the software. So let's pop over to the computer and take a look. All right, we are now uh, logged into our computer and we've got a browser open. Now, if this were the first time that you were connecting to your Raspberry Pi, you would go into your Wi-Fi settings and you would connect to the Wi-Fi for the hotspot uh, that's generated by the Raspberry Pi. And since I've already done that, basically we're going to stellarmate.local.680. We're going to connect to our Raspberry Pi and the password is smate, S-M-A-T-E. It's default password for the Raspberry Pi and the StellarMate uh, setup. So this is the StellarMate desktop. Uh, again, the Raspberry Pi is essentially a single board computer and it is running a flavor of Linux um, that is completely customized and set up for astronomy. We have K-Stars, we have PhD2, uh, which is for guiding, we have our image viewer, uh, pretty much everything that we need to be able to get going. So when we come in here the first thing we want to do is check our advanced network configuration. Now again you would start by connecting to the StellarMate hotspot. You connect your computer to that directly and then you can add a new connection and you can do that with the plus here. Now again uh, Wi-Fi connection and I've already created a new Wi-Fi connection and what I did is I told the, um, the StellarMate uh, or the Raspberry Pi to connect to my local home network and entered the password and what that does is that gives us the ability to access that from our computer on our local network and also have an internet connection so that we can run the most important first thing the software updater. So we come here and we check for software updates. Again, if this is the first time you've installed this and set it up, uh, you're, you will probably find a software update ready to go and you'll need to install that. We're already up to date and we're good to go. So that's the first most important thing to do here. The next thing that we want to look at is we'll go to StellarMate and we look at downloads and the mobile app. For our project, we're going to be using this on the iPad. So we have StellarMate for Android and we have StellarMate for iOS. Both of these apps, depending on which, uh, which tablet or phone you want to use, you can download this directly to your Android phone or your uh, Android tablet. Same for the iOS version for your iPhone or your iPad. Now, I use the iPad, so under the App Store, I will be able to go in and just download this on the iPad. And that's all there is to it. We are now connected and set up. So the next thing we'll do is jump over to our iPad and look at the app that will be used to controlling our telescope, our mount, our camera, everything. All right, so here we are on my 
quite overcrowded iPad and uh, we've installed the StellarMate OS application and we're going to establish a connection with our, uh, our Raspberry Pi running StellarMate. You can see the IP address shown in the left hand corner and that's on our internal network. So my iPad and the, uh, the StellarMate Raspberry Pi are both connected to my home network. So when we go in here the first thing we want to look at is our uh, our equipment setup. So I have a test setup created and we can take a look at that and that has a mount and a camera in there and we can uh, also look at our telescopes we can set up our primary scope um, and our secondary scope. Once we start this we will uh, be able to go and look at the devices and at the um, targets that we would be able to view. Again, we don't really have any um, we don't have any hardware physically connected right now. But if we go into our target section, um, this is one of the cool things I wanted to show you and why I really wanted this app uh, for controlling this uh, little smart scope. So we can choose between stars. and it will bring up a list of, uh, of stars that are visible to us. The section to the right with the green, this is a transit arc, so it shows us the name of the star, the image of the star, and then the transit arc. The area in the center in the black where the, air, uh, where the arc goes through is actually the um, nighttime sky. So it shows us what is nighttime and how high the actual object will be up in the sky. So if we go and look at planets for tonight, we can see that, uh, let's go down to Jupiter. Jupiter is going to be about uh, 40 degrees up in, uh, in my night sky, 40 to 50 degrees, about 1800 hours and it will rise at 1259, it will transit at 1826, and it will set at 2350. So this is a great uh, observing tool for being able to uh, to find what you want and we can actually just hit go to to go to those targets once we get a little farther along. Uh, let's look at planetary nebula real quick. So we can see the helix nebula, we can see again how high it's going to be in the sky when it transits when it rises and sets so that's one of the coolest things um, this section here this page shows us our our current network uh, what we're connected to uh, whether we have an ethernet connection or not but it tells us also the temperature of our uh, uh, raspberry pi how much storage we have how much ram we're using and how much cpu cycle we're using um, and then our offline viewer for images we don't have any images yet so we won't worry about that and then settings for the rest of it so that's the basics of the app our next uh, our next process is to get set up with a, uh, a telescope and a mount and we'll get those connected up and we'll probably start do we'll start that next episode we're going to uh, to review the three scopes that I have chosen and the mount that we're probably going to be using for this. So that wraps it up for this time and we will catch you next week. Tell the world, tell this to everybody wherever they are. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the skies.